Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this demonstration on workflows. Workflows is um, an automation uh, tool within ECC and you could use workflows to trigger various notifications and uh, use it for streamlining um, the work processes within your organization. I feel that workflows is not that used within ECC uh, customers, um, partly because of lack of knowledge uh, within the customers. But uh, I hope that uh, this video is going to uh, demonstrate and help you to create your own workflows and maybe make it, um, um, you know, as a tool which your business can use. So. I am going to show you a workflow. Uh, it's a simple workflow which explains the concept. This workflow is going to trigger a mail um, every time a sales order is changed. Okay. And uh, let's say it's going to send a mail, um, a different mail, if that order is low value, um, let's say less than $1,000 of net value. And it's going to send a separate one if it is a high value, which is more than thousand dollars. So I am in SWDD transaction, which is the workflow builder. And I am creating a new workflow by clicking on this icon that you see here. When I come to this workflow builder, you can see that there are different panes uh, or uh, windows in this uh, screen. This one is a graphical model where you could see, um, you know, uh, kind of a flow chart, if I may say. On the left hand side, uh, you could see the workflow, the version, and status. Right now, the workflow number is not generated because I haven't saved it. But as we go along, you would see that workflow number will get generated automatically. Uh, then there is a navigation area where there are different steps and a workflow could consist of multiple steps. Now, right now you could see that there's only one step which is also not defined. Um, apart from that, we have workflow container that you could see. Uh, workflow containers are basically data containers um, and they could be used within the workflow to you know, access data and you know um, decide the flow of uh, uh, system as per that i'll shortly show you how workflow container could be used on the right hand most side uh, this is like a bird's eye view of you know um, where we are in the workflow some workflow could be very complicated and very long so you could use this right hand panel to zoom in into a specific section of the workflow okay so now having said that, uh, let's save our workflow. So let me save this. Okay, so I am just saving it as a local object. You can see that there's the workflow number and uh, we are on the 0, 0, 0, 0 version. Okay. Now, as our workflow is dependent on changing of the sales order, so I would go ahead and create a container which has the sales order. Okay. So Okay, now you could see that, uh, uh, you know, I have different options which I could refer to our object type, uh, dictionary reference. So I, I could actually go ahead and, you know, use the business object for sales order. So if you, okay, let me search. So you can see that BUS2032 is sales order. So I go ahead and save it. Okay, so 
no spaces so anyways so here we have the workflow container getting created okay and i can just change the properties and i can Uh, I can choose to have import and export uh, parameter settings. I could also indicate whether this is a multi-line element. And I could also set up the initial value if I want to set. But I'll not do it right now because I'll show it to you later. Okay, so uh, now I have the workflow container. Now let me go ahead and um, define the step. So my first step is to check whether the sales order um, is, uh, you know, a high value or not. So, so what I do is I go ahead and I go ahead and create a step. Now, as soon as I go ahead and create a step, I get these options. So, a step could have could be an activity, a web activity, send mail, a form, and so many other types. Okay. In our case, as you would have guessed, it's a condition. So I go ahead and create a condition. Okay. So outcome, if it is true, is if a high value, otherwise a low value. Okay, now I have to create a condition. So what I do here is I click to create a new condition and I go inside this and I, yeah, I have the net value out here. Okay. And uh, so when I put that, if it is uh, greater than or equal to uh, 1000 I'll consider that as you know a high value okay if it is false there's a low value so my condition is set okay now you can see that this check is already built in and I have a flow which is low value and there's a different um, you know um, route for a high value now, if it is a low value, now let me go ahead and uh, create a step out here. So if it is a low value, I'm going to send a mail. Now, who is going to receive that mail? Okay, I have different options out here. Okay, based on email, organizational object, Right now, I have chosen workflow initiator. So whoever is going to initiate the workflow will get this email. So here, I would say low value order changed. So here, uh, this is the subject. Dear user, uh, sales order, order has been changed. It's a low value, low value order. Thanks. So this is basically, uh, you know, the email which is going to be sent out. So I am saving this local object. Now again, if it is a high value, uh, I'm going to edit, create a step, which will again send an email. And this time we're gonna say it's high value. So here, as you can see that I'm going to paste the same thing and just replace the text. So we are good to go. Now, one thing which I missed out uh, in this process is this workflow should get started if a sales order is changed. So that is something I should have defined out here. 
now let me go ahead and change the container So uh, in this one, um, basically, if I go and uh, go to the header of the workflow, I can see that you know it is a start event, and here I could say that business object and uh, sales order, and what is the event which is going to trigger? So I have all these uh, events. I'm going to say change. So I'm saving it. So now, if I go back to the workflow, you can say that every time the sales order is going to change, uh, change, I is going to check the net value, and depending on whether it's high value or low value, is going to send an email. So we are done with the definition. Now let's check the syntax. Now, as uh, you can see, that the syntax looks okay. And I'm going to activate this. So now the workflow is active. Now let's test a workflow. Now you can see that out here when I go ahead and test it, I can assign a value to sales order and I can do it like this 10488 is a recent order that I created. Now I go ahead and execute. As soon as I do that, it says the work item ID is uh, in progress. Now to see the workflow log, I could click here. You can see that you know all the steps are complete and the mail has been sent. Now that's good and. Uh, if I go to the business workplace, you can see that I have 100 document, a high value order has changed, and this is the automatic notification I got. Now, was it actually a high value order? So let's go inside the order to check. Yes, it is more than a thousand dollars, so it was a high value order. So, as you could see, that we defined the workflow and we made a decision based on the net value, and it triggers an automatic notification to the user if the um, the value of the order is less than thousand or greater than thousand. So, uh, I hope that you found this demonstration useful. If you have any questions, any comment, uh, please feel free to put that as a reply to the post and one of us will definitely get back to you. Thank you so much for your time and uh, really appreciate that. Thanks.